Wake up, wake up, wake up. Ow. Hmm. There is nothing wrong with your podcast player. Do not attempt to adjust the volume. Hello and welcome back in And he fizzled out and died. Hi, this is Tom Bergeron. You know what you're doing? You're listening to the Geek Cast Radio Network. I'm your ghost of Christmas presents. Like a Christmas carol? There is nothing wrong with your podcast player, but apparently there's something wrong with me. Do not attempt to adjust the volume. Hello and welcome. We're, we're here, folks. This well, is Mike was just spirited away. That's that's all we'll say. You know. Yes, yes, yes. I... <laughs> ah, humbug. <laughs> yeah. On a bitter, cold Christmas Eve, one dark soul is selected for redemption by the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and yet to come tradition that continues to this very night like a christmas carol yes yes if you would just let me get this out sit so out of all the people on the planet murderers people who do gender reveal parties i'm the guy you're gonna haunt you know what forget it i told you the guy is a level 20 pain in the dickens come on i can take this guy i'm your ghost of christmas present La 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 la, I'm not watching your dramatic re -encrapment. Hey, I'm haunting you. You can't just run away from me when I'm haunting you. Hello? I believe he can be a positive force for mankind. And he's got his hands all over everything. Yeah, I wish. Maude, are you texting HR? No. People don't change. We got a runner! That's just fun to watch. I'm here to change him to being a more positive force for humanity. <laughs> Clint. <laughs> Clint. <laughs> yeah. Do you Photoshop yourself into these pictures of my executive VP? I don't think so. Oh, you want that. What I want is for you to shut up and let me do my job. Is there a ghost of Christmas, Grumpy? Because you could do that job. <laughs> where real change begins. Oh. oh, that's... Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, that... No, no, he's fine. He's good. Well, he's... well none of us real anyway. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, that so was probably one of the funniest parts, honestly. It's like, what the hell are they doing? Uh, it, it actually, <laughs> like, I know you were, like, kind of apprehensive because it was Will Ferrell. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, some of his stuff is kind of, eh. But I, I used to enjoy his stuff on SNL. Mm -hmm. And then Ryan Reynolds I always enjoy anyway, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. So the combination for me was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was just i mean i the the first i heard of this was when they did that um that video last year or the year yeah. before or something the tiktok video where they they did the you know i can be black i can be blue you know uh and and ryan reynolds is doing it and then all of a sudden will ferrell you know bolts in with like a really high-pitched voice <laughs> and then they start singing together <laughs> yes oh boy so, as Steve said, we're talking about the Apple TV Plus or Apple Plus, whatever the hell, Apple, whatever, uh, Spirited. Uh, it was directed by Sean Anders, written by Sean Anders with John Morris, based on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Which, the, to be honest, it was kind it, of a, a refreshing new take on it, because I didn't yeah. exactly, I mean, I kind of knew it was taking that route, but I didn't the revelation that they had later yeah. that it actually was him. Yeah. I did not get like watching the first, uh, up until that point, however long from the time the movie starts up until the point that you realize, and, and it is explained that he is, that Will Ferrell is Scrooge. I did not get any of like, did not even, I wasn't even thinking. And then I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, 
like you just said, this is kind of refreshing. This is a different take it's, on it's it. It's a new this take, is, which was yeah. nice. And I, yeah. I kind of, you know, I, and I've seen other versions of the, you know, the past, present, and future thing, like the, uh, you know, they've done the, there, there's been other Christmas movies that have done this, but not with the, the Scrooge ish type thing. They've done more of the trying to show them the Christmas spirit instead of showing them, mm-hmm. you know, that they're a rotten person. Uh, <laughs> and so, and then I thought it was funny that, you know, Ryan and him were both the unredeemable, <laughs> uh, in the, in the movie. And, uh, I don't know, like, I mean, you had a lot of cameo type roles in it too, but you had a lot of entertaining points that, that kind of just struck out there. And then the, uh, I, I was kind of surprised because normally I don't like musicals. Yeah, I'm not at all. a musical fan either. Yeah. I, I normally don't, but it seemed to work with this just because of their their presence, their on-screen presence and how they portrayed this. Because uh, like I said, normally I don't, I don't like them at all. I will not watch them. It's mm-hmm. just, uh, unless it's something like a, you know, like a Chevy chase type thing, or, you know, just uh, somebody that's just doing it as part of a scene. It's not like the whole movie. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed the, the way that they did this. And I, I thought it was funny how they worked in Tracy Morgan. Uh, yes. That who worked with Will Ferrell a lot, you know, back in the day on SNL. Yep. And uh, I, I don't know. It was, it was it was just a lot of fun all the way through. Yeah, it's it's very very fun, and it, it's well, like you said. It's like, I went through something in 2016 out in California where I had to basically watch every single, or I was subjected to watching every single version that has ever been made of A Christmas Carol. There are only two versions of A Christmas Carol that I can actually watch to this day if I so choose to do so, which is The Muppets Christmas Carol and Mickey's Christmas Carol. Every other version I could give a crap less about up until now, because as we've said already and we're repeating ourselves, this was a fresh take on it. It was different. It was fun. I'm generally not a Farrell or Reynolds fan. Generally. Although you've really started to like some of Reynolds' recent stuff. Because he's not... He's grown up, but he's not like... For him to be juvenile, that's what Deadpool is for. Like yeah, if he wants well, to do like the comedy that he used to do years and years and years ago, that's why I was never really a fan of his. Now... I've seen him do serious stuff before, mm-hmm. like, I mean, Van Wilder's, you know, I know that's what you're referencing. Yeah. And, but I liked I, the first, I, I liked Van Wilder. Van Wilder was fine, but like, what was it? Just friends. And there was, I a, liked just were, friends too. Uh, it just because I like his snarkiness, like his sarcastic yeah. snarkiness. I love yeah. it in any role that he plays, yeah. but he does. I, I loved free guy. Yep. That was probably like that was totally his wheelhouse. Like, oh, absolutely, it, it, it was, was just yeah. without the vulgarity par- portion. Mm-hmm. It's just him, you know, normal, uh, sarcastic, and and everything else. And then you have uh, uh, there's the one with him and the Rock and Gal Gadot on. Oh, I know uh, what you're talking about. Yeah, yes. that one was pretty good. God, I know what you're talking. Oh, it's the not Black Adam. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the they're doing the treasure heist and, yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. There's going to yeah. be a second one. Uh, but and same thing with Free Guy. But what I love about his recent stuff is, other than Deadpool, he's got new, like new movie universe type things. Like not really universe, but just you know standalone movies that yeah he could do a sequel. He could leave it alone, but they're yep. good on their own. And they're not beholden to some, you know, I got to watch 20 movies to understand what's going on. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, I forgot, not that we're going to be paying any attention to this. I forgot he was in RIPD from 2013. Yeah, he was in that. That was pretty good, too. Completely forgot about that. Red Notice. Is the red notice? Yep. Yeah, that's where I, I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yep. 
He's also in the new one this year, uh, Bullet Train. I've heard a lot of good things about that. But I haven't seen that. That's just an uncredited cameo. Uh, Bullet Train, uh, 2022 American action comedy film starring Brad Pitt. Assassin who must battle fellow killers while riding a bullet train. Okay, well, that's a simple plot. It's fine. It is what it is. I'm sure it's a good movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Point is, Spirited... I enjoyed the hell out of this because I love Octavia Spencer. She is <laughs> a, such a great actress. And I, every time I, it's so weird when I always end up bringing this, this, this short lived series up that was on, I believe it was on NBC. It was called the red band society. It was like, I don't know. Not six episodes. It was it was just a short one season thing, but it was about this hospital that caters to kids with cancer and things like that. And the main kid was in a coma the whole time. But hmm. you see the point of view of the show from his like he's like floating around watching all these other kids and everything else. But Octavia Spencer was the head nurse, and her character in that. It was just so absolutely hilarious. I know she's done a bunch of other things, but that's the one thing that I remember her from. So anytime she shows up, it's like, oh, hey, I like her. She's going to be, this is going to be good. This is going to be fun. And everybody else that was in it was great. I mean, there's not a bad acting job in this movie at all. Yeah. And yeah, going back to like, to, to spirited though, I, mm-hmm. I, I like how, you know, originally they, they were going to do this hotel manager who was, you know, a total jerk too. And then yep. Ryan Reynolds bolts through and is like face to face with Will Ferrell. And he's like, that's the one. <laughs> yep. And, and then the, the early retirement thing. And, and I was kind of, uh, it, it was interesting how they, they brought him Scrooge back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or Roberto, as they called him later, uh, <laughs> and he, you know, he's experiencing all these new amenities for the first time, and uh, you know, Clint Ryan Reynolds' character mm-hmm. is is genuinely, you know, trying to help him and you know, bros with him, and then gets hit by a bus, <laughs> and and ends up, you know, saving him. Yeah. And I don't know why, you know, Roberto, you know, could see the, the musical thing. Uh, probably yeah. because he used to be dead. Yeah, I, th- I and, think it's one of those um, sort of it's one of those sort of Nicolas Cage City of Angels things when he suspension chooses. Suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Well, suspension of disbelief, yes, but. When he cho- when in City of Angels from 1998, when Nicolas Cage as an angel chooses to fall from heaven and become human, he still retains the knowledge of what the angels do. So he knows that every morning or every evening they go to the beach and they either stare at the sunset or the sunrise or sing or whatever. So it's probably one of those things, but we can just leave it up to suspension of disbelief. But yeah, and and I find it funny how, you know, they're like, go to the light. And he's like, no. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> he's no. like, I have other plans. And then you see him running the show, mm-hmm. taking over in the, you know, spirit world. And he's like, oh, no, we're doing this every day. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I like that. I think that's a nice, like, it. okay, yes, he, technically he, he, he turned, died. Yeah. But. But he turned his his life per se around and gave it some meaning doing something similar, but he's helping people instead of tearing them down. Absolutely. And that's awesome. That's great. It's just a fun movie, folks. This may end up being a short episode of this podcast because it's holiday times. I'm burnt out. You're burnt out. We're all burnt. <laughs> we all feel like burnt toast at this point, and somebody just didn't dip us in the hot chocolate yet. Because, yeah, and this is, again, shows you, shows you and it shows me, like, this should, this film, like, I don't, like, Free Guy was fine as a 
single body of work. It's fine if we're going to get a sequel. That's fine if they can come up with something else that's going to be as awesome as the original one. But I miss that era of having a one and done one one and done film. If you have a script, if you have a story that has a beginning, middle, and end, and it has a satisfactory ending that isn't just you know a cliffhanger or this or that. Yes, I'm left wondering. Yes, I would love to see something with these characters again. Do I need it? Hell no. Am I gonna you know go bitching on the internet because I want a sequel to a movie that doesn't need one? It doesn't need one. It, it it just doesn't. And I love that we are. I'm hoping that we are getting back to that thing of having these one off movies that don't need two, three, four, twelve. I I agree. I I am kind of tired of franchise and universe films. I'm not even like yeah. I like, agree. It's, it's more but- so, it's more so just because there's just too many of them. It's not yeah. that I it it's not that I have anything against them or I you know hate mm-hmm. the fact that there are those in existence. It's more so I'm just done with trying to be invested in this whole you know. Oh, I you know a new Marvel movie came out. Oh, I need to watch the last twenty movies to know what's going on. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of that mentality. I, I don't need a whole universe. I, a one and done is perfectly fine because at this point it's easier to uh, more or less go and just watch it for the pure enjoyment of it and not feel like you have to watch something else around it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't mind. I actually love trilogies. Yeah. But beyond a trilogy, I feel like it's like, okay, all right, we're dragging it out now. Thanks. Yeah. And I don't like we, we, we live in the age where we've had the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I don't mind that we've had that. I think that's I don't great. mind it either, but I, love I, I that, think it needs to kind of slow yeah. down. Well, the Marvel train will never slow down, but I think everyone else who – wants to try to be the Marvel train just needs to put the brakes on and just do what they do best. Like again, you know, we talked about, uh, was it episode 51? Yeah. Episode 51 of the podcast. We talked about, uh, six underground and, uh, the Adam project. Would I have loved to have seen a sequel to six underground? Sure. I'm perfectly fine not having one because the story had a beginning, middle and end and it ended on, you know, whatever. Same thing with the, the Adam project. That is my new, (laughs) I love time travel. I love time travel too. And I love paradoxes. Yeah. And I love all that stuff too. But like, for some odd reason, the Adam project is my new, I will watch it whenever I want to movie. Like if I don't want to do anything or if I want, Hell, I fell asleep to it the other day. I've seen it so many times now. I've seen it that many times at this point. That's free guy for me. I can't fall. I don't know how you fall asleep to free guy. No, no, no. I don't fall asleep. I watch oh, the whole okay. thing. I just, but that's, I, yeah, yeah, you just put it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Spirited, it's, it's a good movie, folks. If you're burnt out on Scrooge, this will frost over your heart. It is on Apple TV+. Plus. Don't ask us how we got it. But, you know, and it yeah. is the, uh, the, the, the Christmas season and I haven't really outside of this, haven't really watched any Christmas stuff yet this year. I don't know why. I mean, I'm, you know, a year away from or a year removed from when Karen passed, but like I watched a couple of Christmas things last year, but I just, I don't know. It's not that I'm not in the mood for it. I just haven't watched anything yet. And we are recording this three days before Christmas. So eh, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, Anything else we want to say about spirited? I think it's funny that they have a soundtrack with all of the musical numbers. Yes. Uh, What, what, like if you had to pick one or two, what was your uh, favorite ones in there? See, that's the thing. Like, I'm not a. I, I know you're not, but I'm saying like I know, you had to pick one. I know. I I like the way that 
I like the story of your life, Marley's Haunt, which is uh, Paige and Reynolds. It's Patrick Page and, and Ryan Reynolds. I like that because that's the interesting thing about this. You have Will Ferrell as Scrooge. You have Patrick Page as Jacob Marley. Usually Jacob, in, in most of the stories, he's there for maybe 10 minutes at the beginning. No, and he's then, running the whole show. Yeah, and that, well, in this he is, yeah. Um, I like the view from here, but I like the reprisal of it because they do two different, ver- they do, they sing it twice because she sings it when she's, uh, at the top of the, um, the top of the, the 48th floor there. And then they sing it again later when they're walking through the city. So I like it when they're, you know, walking through the city yeah, yeah, the 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 Riverwalk version, which is track ten. What about you? What did you like about this? I I liked the like the unredeemable, uh, just because it actually was pretty decent. Yeah, uh, I liked Good Afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> because I was like. Okay, this is you know that's yeah. entertaining. It's I I laughed like genuinely. I was like, oh, that's pretty good actually. Yeah. Um, and then you know the last uh, uh, I, I think the the Christmas morning one, but uh, I can't recall at the moment. But yeah, the there was the the, the good afternoon stood out the most for me. Uh, yeah. And. Reynolds, you know, bringing back Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. Bringing back Christmas was good. I was like, okay, the, that's that's yeah, pure him. Yeah. And I love the one thing I will say about the movie. Uh, even though I'm not the biggest fan of musicals, I like the pacing and how they move into and out of the songs. Like, there's a point in the beginning where it doesn't look like Ryan's going to sing or Will's going to sing. And then all of a sudden they say something to one another. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, they're, they're, they're singing a song. So I like that. I, I think that's fun. I think that's cool. I think that's a good way to, good way to do it. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. The only other thing I think, uh, for 2022 is that, uh, we've reached 54 episodes in our, Two year history at this point, or three year history at this point, because we started this show in 2020. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's gonna do it for this year in the studio. Uh, next year, we've got a whole bunch of stuff planned. We're gonna get back to some TV stuff finally. We're gonna probably do some more music stuff. I know we're obviously gonna do more movie stuff. I still have podcast approach. Actually, the first two episodes of the year are gonna be podcast approaches because I've already recorded one half of one and then. On December 23rd, 2022, I will be recording the other one uh, with a actual professor of audio. Hmm. So, very, very interesting. going to have a cool conversation with him about certain audio things, and we're going to talk about accessibility with audio and things like that and all that good stuff. Anything you want to... What, what are you guys doing for Christmas? What do you got? What are you going to show the kids this year for Christmas that they haven't already seen? Show them. Yes, like uh, specials, movies, animation. Eh, not much. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, but what they don't know is, <laughs> uh, well, we're we're celebrate we celebrate Christmas uh, this year because we're um, going to be visiting some family. Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing it on the 23rd. Uh, so technically, so, when you're hearing this, folks, Steve actually isn't in Colorado anymore. He's back home in Michigan. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, um, my kids are getting... Uh, Nolan wanted uh, Wheelie, mm-hmm. the, the little... Core class. Core class. And then Ian wanted Hot Rod. Ooh, the um, the new one, the uh, the the wait, the core class or the he's regular? getting the core class, yeah. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, awesome, awesome, very cool, very cool. Yeah, so he's they don't know that they got it. I saw uh, Walmart had 
the <laughs> core class wheelie and ratchet the other day. And uh, I was with the kids and they're like, Oh, I want that. And Ian's <laughs> like, I want hot rod. And uh, I mean, he don't get me wrong. He would love to have the, the Voyager. Yeah. But one, they don't sell it in the store anymore too. I'd have to get it on BBTS or, um, and three, like I'm not trying to break the bank buying a bunch <laughs> of toys that he's probably not going to play with much after he gets it. Uh, I mean, at least he's a smart kid going after the proper leader. Yep. Whatever. It's hot rod. It's not Rodimus. So same difference. Same yeah. character. Yeah. Debatable. He got the matrix that, that gave him some added smarts, but he still wallowed in self pity. Uh, anyways, yeah, so he's he's getting that, and uh, they don't know it yet, so they'll be excited. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us here inside the studio. Uh, zero to five, what would you give Spirited? <sighs> Surprisingly, I would give it a five, which... Is mind boggling because well, I hate you musicals. Don't, yeah, well, you hate music. We both we, like. I don't. But it was mind funny. Them. Like yeah. the movie was funny. Yeah, and and it's very hard to find one that's that anymore. Like it's it's very hard because most of the movies are just very crass or they're they're just not very well put together. Mm-hmm. And I just, I don't care for, you know, the constant, like, I don't mind a little bit of swearing, but like when it's constant, it automatically like tunes me out. I'm like, eh, I'm, I'm good. Cause like, it's not as entertaining or intelligent as I feel it could be by using other ways of being sarcastic and crude. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, I am. I'm going to say two things. I am also going to give it a five because I really, really enjoyed it. The musical part of it really had like, if it took me out of it, I'd probably give it a lower grade, but it didn't. It was just kind of there. But also this is probably going to be next to Mickey's Christmas Carol and Muppets Christmas. This is probably going to be the third in my Christmas carols at this point, because no other versions matter anymore. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) All right, folks. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All that good stuff. Whatever you celebrate. Happy, happy. Thank you for joining us here inside the studio. If you'd like, you can have time. Fuck. Ooh. (laughs) Technical difficulties. Let's move on, shall we? Thank you for joining us here inside the studio. If you'd like, you can contact with us. Leave feedback for the show. There are several ways to do so. Visit the website, geekcastradio.com, where you can listen to and comment on all of our content. Send any email to feedback at geekcastradio.com. You can check us out on any podcatching client you choose to use. I prefer Spotify just because the UI is the best. Leave the show's feedback in iTunes. Yes, iTunes is still a thing, and yes, I check every once in a while. You can follow us on Twitter at Geekcast Radio for the network at It's Studio 2009 for the show. I am at TFU and Mike. What is your Twitter? At SCP21. Become a fan on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash geekcast radio network. You can also check out Studio 2009 podcast over there as well. Join us next time when I will be getting the podcast approach of a one Mr. Optimus solo. So that's finally happening. (laughs) Which, that one was weird. As of this recording, we've only recorded the listener portion, so the first 15 questions. He never listened before he started producing, so I had to throw out half those questions. Nice. (laughs) It's kind of like we started him on his podcast journey. He started producing first, and then he went back and listened to stuff after. Nice. (laughs) I'm like, you're screwing with my format here, dude. (laughs) But it is his story, so that's going to be fun coming up here in January. For now, I am TFG and Mike with... Steve Megatron. You'll hear us back in the studio soon. Get ready for 2023, folks. It's going to be a fun one. We hope. Hey there. Uh, Will, Octavia, and I, we, we want to thank everyone who's made Spirited the most watched movie ever on Apple TV+. Plus. That's crazy. A turning point in our film is the song Unredeemable. It's an emotional anthem about whether humanity can overcome our, our mistakes, and I hope we can. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Let, let's be kind to each other. 
Also, ladies and gentlemen, Nickelback. Destruction in the wake With all the bridges burned And wounds I didn't mend The worth I thought I earned Was worthless in the end It's still I tried To make amends to the end of time And tears to overcompensate Banking every deed needed to accumulate Haunted by someone I'm trying to replace Repenting for a past I wish I could erase And still I tried to make amends to the Oh, can my words be left behind?